Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest Carson's Take 5 with Ryan and Sonu. Sonu, we're titling this one, Debt Isn't As Bad As You Think. Because all we hear is all this debt that our country has, that consumers have, all these worries. We're not naive or ignoring that you have a lot of debt that might not always not be the, might not be the best situation to be in. But let's start with credit card debt, Sonu. $1.13 trillion, an all-time mm-hmm. record. Talk, talk me off the ledge. Why are we not going straight to a recession if we have record credit card debt? Look, you have to put that. Look at the. We have to always look at the overall picture when you talk mm-hmm. about debt, household debt in particular. So, you know, beyond credit card debt, yes, credit card debt rose fifty billion in the last quarter, fourth quarter of twenty twenty three to one point one three trillion. By itself, sounds like oh my god, that's scary. Here's an even more scary number, right? Overall debt is seventeen and a half trillion. Yep. Right. So that, that's a much that's 17 times credit card debt. But a lot of that is, you know, mortgage debt, right? So mortgage debt, household uh, uh, mortgage debt and equ- home equity loans, about 72 percent of that close to about twelve and a half uh, trillion dollars. And nobody talks about, oh, my God, mortgage debt is so high. Right. And, right. And the focus is usually on credit card debt. But it just goes to show that you have to look at the whole picture. Overall debt increased nine hundred and eighty eight billion in twenty twenty three. But disposable income, which is what is used to service that debt, mm-hmm. by the way, nobody pays off their debt every month. Maybe, you know, credit cards, yes, but not your mortgages, anything like that. Disposable income rose $1.33 trillion. It's very rare for disposable income to rise more than debt, but it means households delevered last year, right? That's not what we saw even before the pandemic. In 2019, debt grew $600 billion, disposable income grew $430 billion, right? So just some perspective. And that's also not what we tend to hear when you turn on TV, because TV always talks about record trillion dollars of credit card debt, and and they make it sound terrible. But again, if you peel back the onion and you look a little deeper, we call this denominator blindness, right? The numerator, yes, credit card debt's up a lot, but so is net wealth. So is disposable income. So if you go back to 2000, credit card debt's up 125%. Okay. Well, well, that sounds like a lot. What's it mean? Net wealth, U.S. household net wealth is up 250%. Now, this might not be apples to apples. Let me be very clear. But again, if you're worth more, you might have a little more debt. And so, no, one thing that you uh, you pointed out uh, with, the, with the cool note that you sent out recently, almost 97% of all payments, because we've seen some people when it comes to credit cards and some autos are getting a little late on their payments. Yeah. But still, 97% of all payments in the fourth quarter were on time. You want to talk to uh, the listeners about what that number means? And where was it even in 2019 and before the great financial crisis? Right. Yeah. So the opposite, the other side of that is if 97% are on time, that means 3% are delinquent. Good point. Right. Uh, Like 30 days. You must have gone to Purdue and got an engineering degree to figure that one out. (laughs) 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 Well, uh, you know, if you'd said like 96.9 or something, you know, we'd take a little while. I was rounding. Figure yeah. that that was 3.1 percent of delinquent. But look, three percent of balances are delinquent. Whereas mm-hmm. in 2019, it was about it was close to five percent, which means only 95 percent were on time with respect to payments, right? And if you look at the worst delinquent balances, right, yeah. 120 days late, severely derogatory balances, that's running about one and a half percent of overall total balance, total debt balances, right? Before the pandemic, it was almost twice that, 2.83 percent, right? So, you know, I, I think overall, big picture, households are in a pretty better, uh, you know, much better shape, frankly, than they were before the pandemic. I mean, yep. Uh, this is data from the New York Fed. Yesterday, I, I put a note out saying, look, if you look at, you mentioned net worth. If you look at mm-hmm. real wealth increase, right, across age groups. So this is after adjusting yeah. for inflation. Between 2019, so end of 2019 through, through 2023, third quarter, the age group 18 to 39, they saw net real wealth increase 80%, right? 80%. Hmm. Right. So that's wow. after adjusting for inflation. A lot, a lot of that is because they put their money in stocks and stocks gained a lot. Right. So that, that's some perspective for you. No, it is. It is. And believe me, I mean, we, we are aware there's certain parts of the economy that are still struggling. Certain consumers absolutely are still struggling. But just broadly to say, you know, the consumer is tapped out. The consumer is in trouble. We, we push against that. We've been pushing against that for a while. If you listen to these, we've said there'd be no recession last year. We still don't see a recession this year. What's the 
biggest reason why? Listen, two-thirds of our economy, which is GDP, gross domestic product, is the consumer. If the consumer is still getting jobs, the consumer is out there making money, making incomes higher than inflation, keep this fairly simple. It's just going to be very hard, we think, to have a recession. If things start to fall apart, we will see it in the data and we'll start to point it out. But things still look pretty good. Sonu, uh, any final comments? We were about at five minutes here. I think, no, the consumer is not tapped out and they have a lot of dry powder left. I think that's what I would say. No, that's a good way to put it. So with all of that, this is the latest Carson's Take 5. We'll see everyone next week. Take care.